All right, here we go, guys. Mr. Mice is here with uh, <clears throat> 3-1b for BC Calculus. We're looking at the second derivative test. Now, the second derivative test, some people get this confused with a test for concavity, but the second derivative test does not look for concavity. It does not look for points of, in well, we do use concavity, but we, we're not looking for points of inflection. What we're really looking for is extrema points, max and mins. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to find our critical numbers using the derivative. Then we're going to use our second derivative and, an and analyze the concavity, whether it's concave up, which will give us a min, or concave down, which will give us a relative max. Sometimes it doesn't work, right? Because if the derivative, if the second derivative is zero, then it's not positive or negative. There's no concavity there. I don't really know what to do, so it's inconclusive. So the thing about the second derivative test is you don't really need to do it unless the question asks you to do the second derivative test or um, there's a bunch of information and that basically just requires you to use the second derivative test based on the information given and I'll show you an example of where that happens. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here if my computer will work. All right, so let's use the second derivative test to find the relative min and relative max points for the graph of f of x equals negative 3x to the fourth plus 6x. So the first thing we're going to do is find the derivative. And then we're going to set that equal to 0 so that we could find the critical points or the critical values. All right, so we've got critical numbers at x equals 0 and x equals plus or minus 1. So then what we're going to do is we're going to use a second derivative to determine if at that x value it's concave up or concave down. So we're going to do f double prime. We need the second derivative. All right. And now we're going to find out what we're going to plug in 0 to the, to the uh, second derivative. That's going to give me 12. So that's positive, so that means it's going to be concave up, which tells us that there's a relative min at that x value. If we do negative 1 now, negative 1 is going to give me a negative 24. That's concave down, right? Which means that there is a relative max at that x value. If I do the second derivative, I plug in 1, that's going to give me negative 24 again. That's going to be concave down, which is also going to give me a relative max. And that right there is the second derivative test, all right? Now, um, if I wanted to find the relative max points then and the relative min points, then I'd plug in this back in my original function. Oops, not, not that. I'd plug 0 back in my original function, negative 1 back in there, 1 back in there, and I'd find the points. So the relative min point is going to be 0, comma 0. The relative max point here is going to be negative 1, comma 3. And the relative max point here is positive 1, comma 3 when I plug it back into my original function. All right, let's take a look at a different example here. We've got a slew of stuff, right? We've got a bunch of things that we need to, we're given. We're not given a function, though. We're not given an actual uh, uh, algebraic function here where we can take a derivative or take a second derivative. So we're going to just have to use the information given to help us out. So what we got here is we know that our critical numbers are x equals negative 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals 0, and x equals 2. We know that because each of these x values has a derivative that's set equal to 0. <clears throat> not set equal to zero, but each derivative at that x value is equal to zero, which tells me that those are the critical values. So what I want to know is at those x values, what's the second derivative look like? All right, so at those critical values, g prime of negative three, g double prime of negative three is positive four. So that's positive, right? So that's concave up, which gives me a, <clears throat> excuse me, relative min. At negative 1, I get negative 2, so that's concave down, which gives me a relative max. 
at x equals 0, g double prime is 0, so this is inconclusive. So I'm just going to put a question mark here. And at g prime of 2, I got positive 3. So that's positive, which is concave up, which is a relative min. This is just extraneous information here. All right, we really don't need that. So we've got a relative max. Got relative max here at x equals negative 1, relative mins at x equals negative 3, and x equals 2. Now, I don't really know what those points are because all it gives me is the information that I have. There may or may not be a relative extrema at x equals 0. I don't know because um, that's going to end up being an inflection point, and I don't know what's going on there. So, um, you know, we don't know what's going on. This is one of those cases where I told you it could be inconclusive. Even though g is concave up, all right, even though g is concave up at x equals 1, which was what we were given here, it is not a relative min because x equals 1 is not a critical number. So this was just extra information that we didn't really need in our problem. All right, so those are two examples of where we would use what we call the second derivative test to use concavity to determine extrema relative max or relative mens all right all right guys we'll catch you soon bye